that you have a mouth and a microphone close to each other. It's uh, techniques which we were practicing yesterday, right? <laughs> so the most warm hearted welcome to Dubai Men's Department of Applied Media. This is our TV studio, as you can see, and we are very happy to host this event here in our very nice TV studio. Uh, Mark Mathis will be taking care of you, and um, I'm very, very pleased to leave you in his very skillful and strongly uh, professional hands in this field of TV. TV production, video production, interviewing, and so forth. Uh, remember that there are some refreshments. You can take breaks, and this uh, workshop will be uh, probably quite casual in that sense that you are not sitting here and staring the slides, but you are doing. Mm. It's a workshop. Just like yesterday, we did something, and I really hope that uh, you will memorize certain small things. As Nasser said today, that he found out um, several things that he can improve in his TV and all the other materials. And the thing is that in communication, small things matter. You can make a big, big difference with small improvements or changes in your communication. So welcome. I will give uh, the stage to Mark, as this is Mark's evening. Thank you, Udi, our new Commander-in-Chief. Welcome, everybody, to Dubai Men's Campus of Higher Colleges of Technology. My name is Mark Mathias, and I am going to speak with you today about television interview techniques. All right, welcome to our television studio. This is where I teach television productions to a lot of people, and I've been doing this for 15 years, only three years here in the UAE, year and a half at Sharjah Women's, year and a half here at Dubai Men's. But I've worked at many campuses across the USA, and now I'm in the UAE. I spent 20 years as an independent producer creating programs that we're going to work on today. Also, I spent five years in the network and local broadcasting arena in order to create programming for broadcast. And before that, I was in print media. So if you tally all that up, my career has been 46 years in media. I don't look that old, do I? Please lie. All right, I don't look that old. 46 years in journalism. So. What are we going to work on today? What is the purpose of an interview? Why do we even do this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's a win-win situation. Those of you who are in the press, you have to have content. You have to create media in order to send it out to your audience. Can you just sit and generate it? Sure. It's called an opinion. But what you want is the actual facts and truth from those who know. Who knows? The other part of that win, content experts know this information, and they need to present that information to the public so their information is widely known. So you may have an author, you may have a scientist, you may have a politician who needs to get the word out. You as journalists need the word because that is your occupation. So it's a win-win situation. We do interviews because we all win. And who takes this? Your audience. Your audience is either a reader a viewer or a listener. So you always have to keep in mind your audience and when you're creating content. So you need to remind yourself of the audience each and every time. We're gonna talk about the three phases of production today, pre-production, production, and post-production. These are the three phases. Pre-production is something that I say you must do. It's difficult to get students to do that because they just wanna run into production because that's the fun part. That's where the cameras come out and they save it in post. But pre-production planning is the all important part of the interview process. So pre-production, what is it that we wanna say? What is the message you want the audience to take away? You want to leave them with something. Nobody wants to sit here. You don't wanna sit here and listen to me talk. You want to have something imparted upon you so when you leave here, you feel fulfilled for the time that you spent here. So what is it that you wanna say? And who are you saying it to? Your audience. Your audience today, you find people that are here. Maybe your readers are a particular age group. Maybe they're a particular uh, media savvy type person. Maybe they're technology people. You have to make your media to work with your audience. So how do we do this? First of all, research. 
You know you have a story that you want to do. You want to do a story on a particular topic. Well, you have to research it. You're not a content expert. What you are is a media producer. So you have to look up what this is all about. And who is the expert in the field? Can you find these folks? Now, when you find the information and you find somebody that you want to speak with, what's the best way to do an interview? Is it a traditional question and answer? Well, I may ask you a question and I expect a particular answer, or will it be more of a conversation where we sit down and just converse about the topics? It all depends on the format of what you need for production. I'm talking mainly here for television production. So if you're doing a news package, it's two and a half minutes long, you may do a question and answer. If you're doing a 59 minute feature program, you're gonna have a conversation because you're gonna have two different, you need that amount of time. Uh, a two and a half minute package may take you an hour to do the interview. A conversation is going to take you four hours because you're going to need all that information in order to whittle it down. An ambush interview. Anybody know what that might be? I'll tell you what that is. If I take this and I said, what did you do today? Nothing. nothing. She did nothing. All right. That's exactly the wrong way to ask a question. All right. But if you are trying to track someone down, Maybe it's a, uh, a, a crisis that's going on. Uh, there's a, a fire, or there's an accident, or there's some type of mayhem going on, and you just need that on-the-spot person. You're trying to track it down. Hey, what did you see? Tell me what you saw. That's kind of an ambush. Maybe it's a politician. Where I come from, there's always politicians stirring in the corner somewhere, and you have to track them down and get them to say something. So those are the three different types of, of interviews you may end up doing. So when you're doing an interview, think about your location. Where is it that you're going to do, do this work? Does it lend itself to the content? So if you're going to do something uh, in manufacturing, maybe you're going to go to the manufacturing facility. But think about it. Maybe that manufacturing facility is very loud, and it's not conducive for good audio recording. Or maybe you're going to do uh, you know, the repaving of the runway here, and you want to go out on the runway. Well, maybe the jets going by isn't conducive for the best Audio looks great, but it doesn't sound so good. So think about your location. Write out the questions that you want to ask. Everybody has a phone. Most of you have them out right now. You're just going to type it in there. I'm going to keep that. No problem. Well, you may use that phone for recording. So how are you going to do that? OK, write it out. Old fashioned school, pen and pencil, piece of paper works real well. All right. It's, it's got some age on it, but it still works really well. As a matter of fact, we've got pads and pens for you later on if you need to have some. So write out your questions and practice what you're going to say out loud. Don't sit there and go, what good is that? You're going to be on camera. You're going to be enunciating these words, whatever these words are. Hear yourself say them. Say them. The great thing about our business is you just cannot be a wallflower. You cannot say, Oh, I'm not going to, I'll, I'll know it when I can do it. No, you have to practice, 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 practice. And if you hear yourself say it, you go, hmm, does that make any sense? I don't think so. And you improve on it. So when you do ask that all-important question, it sounds good to you. It also sounds good to your interviewee. And I'm going to talk about being an interviewer and interviewee today. If you are an interviewee, you're going to already pre-prepare your answers. As a journalist, you come in with a set of questions. As an interviewee, you have a set amount of information you want to present. Maybe I'm the PR person for a firm, and there's a, something that's coming out, and I have a paragraph of information that I know I need to press to see and hear. So you have that answer already. The journalist tries to lead you to that, you want to get to that point. So you're working together. It's a win-win situation. So production value, single camera or multi-camera. You all have your phones, perfect instrument for recording interviews if you are doing it the proper way. And that's what we're working on today. First of all, if you record like this, this is social media. If you record like this, this is traditional media. All right, vertical information is for social, Horizontal is for traditional media. So keep that in mind when you're recording. Single camera works fine. Multiple camera is better. These guys here are shooting today multiple cameras. I have four cameras within the studio just to record me standing here talking with you. It gives the perspective, gives different views.
news of what's going on. And it keeps the audience engrossed with what the project is. Good audio cannot be stressed enough. We hear something faster than we can see. We think light is really fast, but if you hear something wrong, you will notice it more than if you see something wrong. So good audio is key. Lighting. Lighting is essential for good video. So think about that. Proper framing of your shot. Sometimes when you do an interview, you want to get really tight because it's like, oh, this is really important. I want to get really tight. Today, we can manipulate our video. So stay a little wider because you can always do it in post. Get a little tighter in post. Give yourself some room. You can, you can never pull back out because that information isn't there. So give yourself a little bit of framing so that you can push in if you need to and you have room for text later on. Camera support. I cannot stress enough to use proper support for your cameras. If you hand hold a camera, that's great for an ambush. If you're chasing somebody down the street, that's the only way you can do it. But if you're sitting down to an interview, use some camera support no matter what kind of camera you're using because it's stable, it sits there, it does what it needs to do. Don't turn your camera on unless it's stable, all right? So, interview, dress for success. We know how to do that in this country. Great way, all right? Remove extra items from your pockets. Look at this. I got keys that dangle. I got phones. I know you have one or two phones. Take them out of your pocket. Put them someplace else. Because the audio will pick up the jingling. Even if you have it on vibrate, you may hear that. And it just lightens the load. You just feel better when things are out of your pocket. Um, seating or proper setting. We're going to work on multiple sets today. We have a hardback chair. We have swivel chairs. We have the chroma key room. We have various places. Think about where people are sitting. You're sitting in a hardback straight chair. There is no way that I can get you to go real comfortable in these things. You just can't get comfortable in them. But if you sit back on a couch, you're going to kick back and go, oh, this is nice. Well, you're going to look all scrunched up. As an interviewee, you're going to look like, I don't care. As an interviewer, you can't project anything. So sit in a, in a chair if you're seated and that's something that's a little more rigid, sit forward. Sit upright and be engaged with what's going on. But try to be comfortable. No matter what, be comfortable with who you are, what you're about to say, and where you're going with it, because that's all important. You're going to have your written notes. You're going to start with an icebreaker. Icebreaker is just a, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you for being here. If you're going to shake hands with somebody or greet them, do it before you sit down for the interview. During the interview, reaching over and trying to do that, you're going to do two things. You're going to stretch your mic cable if you've got a mic on. The camera shot is going to not be worth anything, and it really doesn't look too good. So if you really want to say hello to somebody, do that before you get on camera, all right? Um, the icebreaker is just to start a conversation. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. Uh, what brings you here? What's your interest? All right, there's my icebreaker. <laughs> He's full of ice. I can't get there right now, but, w but that's the kind of question. That's OK. It's a, this is kind of a give and take situation. I took. Now you get a gift. All right. So when you're asking a question, when you're asking a question, try not to ask a yes or no or a one word answer question. All right. Because that, you know, doesn't give you anything to work with. Always ask open ended questions. So when I said, what brings you here today? What brings you what brings you here today? Right. No? <laughs> Always control your situation. Never allow the interviewee to take your microphone. If they take your microphone, you are not in control any longer. So when you're doing an interview, would you stand up a minute? Thank you, sir. All right. Welcome to Dubai Men's Campus. My name is Mark Mathias, and we're doing the techniques on interview. What brings you here to our campus today? For training. Training. Are you a journalist by trade? Uh, yes. Can I ask what type of journalism you provide and who might your audience be? Sorry, again? Your audience. Who, who reads or sees your work? Who, who do you write for? Albion newspaper. And their circulation is global? Is it UAE? Where is it? It's UAE. You I'm can not see in the Middle East also. In the Middle East. Yes. Terrific. Yes. And do you have a column or do you have a byline? Or no. no. Okay. You, so, okay. So, where do you, what do you hope to take away with today's interview techniques? Uh, I 
we need to focus about uh, pictures and video more than text in newspaper because there is a lot of text and people don't have time to read. This is true. Well, not too many people yes. uh, read in television <laughs> unless it's very important. So what I'm doing here is I'm keeping control of the situation. I did one thing wrong. I should use this hand rather than this hand. If you see this, I'm closing myself to the camera. I'm blocking who I am. If I use this hand, I am more open to the camera, which you want, you want to be, all right? This is about the proper distance. You want to have a microphone. So when you're working with somebody, you want it right about there. First of all, you may have a logo for your company right here. You want it in the shot, but you don't want to cover their face. You don't want it down here so they can't hear anything. And when I'm doing this, when I'm speaking, the microphone is here. When he's speaking, Yes. The microphone is there. There you go. So if you're doing a handheld mic, make sure the mic is where it's supposed to be. Maybe you're doing something where it's, it's emitting some sound. Uh, you, you have created something wonderful, and, and it emits a wonderful tone, all right? And if I want to hear that tone, the microphone has to be wherever that tone is emitting. So the microphone is the control. If he takes the microphone, I have... I have no reason to be here, all right? So you, you work your microphone. If I want to control him, I'm going to do this. But when I am done, when I am done and I want to move away, I can just step and be just fine. If I want to bring him in, I'll start this way and I'll bring him in. I'll change hands, come in this way, and we can talk, all right? Because you need to have that close proximity in an interview. It's difficult to have such a wide shot. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. All right, that is sir. We'll continue this. Wonderful thing. So we have the, the ask the question. But I am going to also say that down here, once you've asked the question, be quiet. Let them answer. Because you will ruin your sound bite if you go, but, but, or, uh-huh, mm, I see, I understand. You're ruining your sound bite. So let them answer. As a matter of fact, if you're not live, just give it a pause. Just say, start your next question. That helps in the editing process. So don't rush your interview. It's not that important. Stay engaged with the populace, with the people you're talking with. There's nothing worse than an interviewer coming in and looking at the phone, going, oh, man, because I'm trying to be engaged with this person, and you're not engaging with me, so why should I care? Stay engaged, because you only have a short amount of time to get this information. So stay engaged with who you want to do. Pause if you have to. Ask a follow-up question. I asked him why was he here today. Ask some follow-up questions. And again, be quiet when you do it. In your list of questions, which you are going to create today, you are, about three-quarters of the way through your list is going to be the toughest question you're going to ask. You do not start with that one question that is like all defining, you know, why is there air? Okay, we don't know. But if there was a scientist that knows all about air, maybe they could tell us all about it. But about three quarters of the way through, you want to have that question that you have to have the answer to. So don't start out too tough. Don't end too tough. And what we're looking about is that golden nugget. I call it a golden nugget because it's content that you're going to drive the entire piece. You have said something. You have said something to me today. It's about the, the, the institution in which you work the audience where you, who reads this. So now I know something that that is my focus for this particular news story is this journalist from this area is here today to learn about interviewing. That's my golden nugget, all right? And every story should have one. If you do not get a golden nugget, you don't have a story. And always thank them on camera because it's no, nothing better than saying thank you for being here today. It's been wonderful. Is there anything else you could like to add? That little question, anything else you'd like to add? By golly, you're going to get something. It, it may be good, may not be good, but it's going to be there. Um, when you're doing a, a two-camera shoot or a single-camera shoot, I should say, save your questions for last. If you want to shoot yourself as the interviewee or interviewer, ask the person to stay. Do an over-the-shoulder shot with you asking those questions that you just asked them. They are on camera answering it. Do your questions last. Why? 
First of all, now you know the answers to these questions because you've already asked them. You will sound a lot more intelligent because you will make that question a little bit different to match the answer. So if you're on camera, they're asking at the very end, do your, do your question. Either do it over the shoulder or if they leave, just do a close-up of yourself asking the questions. B-roll, B-roll, B-roll. If you want to get a good story, B-roll is all the subsequent footage that you need and audio to help tell the story. If you're in a manufacturing setting, you're going to get the, the parts being manufactured, people working the parts, things going out the door. That's all B-roll. Audio-wise, is just as important. The machines clamoring, the boxes closing, the doors opening. That is audio B-roll. You need both. Your stand-up, if you chose who's to do, a two-and-a-half-minute package, you may do a stand-up. A stand-up is when you're saying, we are here today at ACT, and we have a wonderful crowd with us to learn about interviewing. That's part of my stand-up. I am on camera, and I have seen myself. I may do a walk and talk. A walk and talk is where my camera is stationary, and I may walk directly into the camera, looking to into the camera, saying, and we're going to learn all about wonderful interviewing techniques, especially from multiple cameras such as this today. And I'm moving towards the camera. The camera is stationary. If you lock your camera down and do this with a wireless mic on your phone, it looks beautiful. A walk and talk because people around you are just kind of going by and they don't know what's going on, but it looks good in your footage. So do a stand up and a walk and talk in order to get this done. Now, we're about done here. Post-production, save it in post-production. Your audio from your story drives the content. You may have some beautiful footage, but it's the audio that drives the content, meaning you will tell the story, putting your audio track down first and then putting visuals over it. Because if you think about candy, and we all love candy, the packaging around the candy goes, ooh, it's candy. I want that. But it's the candy itself, the content, the taste, the flavor, the being filled is the audio. So the visual is the packaging. The content is the audio. So always work with audio. Uh, publishing. Printers work with inverted pyramid style. Get all the important information out first, and then the less important stuff at the end. That is not how we do it in television. We do it storytelling-wise, which has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Aristotle created this 100 and, uh, 1,500 years ago. A beginning, a middle, and an end. We have to hook our audience with the beginning, fill them up in the middle, and leave them with something in the end. All right? Open strong. You should always open strong with your audio. Sound bites are typically 7.2 seconds long. That's not very long. 20 words, possibly, for a sound bite. That's not very long, but typically that's what you're going to hear in a news package. So if you think somebody has to talk on, like I've been doing for 10 to 15 minutes, no, you don't want that. You want to have short and concise. Use graphics and text, most assuredly. Keep the wide shot. In post-production, you're gonna add graphics to help support your story text in order to give them credit or wherever you are. If it's live, you're going to have CG in there, but if it's in post, you're going to put in the text. Fix all of your audio and make sure you weave a story. Give yourself credit. That's a sign off. I'm Mark Mathias reporting from ACT Dubai Men's Campus. In print, you get a byline. In broadcasting, unless you say who you are, nobody's going to know. They're going to sit around and read the credits and the crawl at the end. So give yourself a byline on camera. It will be useful to you, it, and it's important. And remember, remember, remember who your audience is. I always like to say when I see a camera talking to me, that's my best friend. I have a best friend that I can say anything to. That camera right there is my best friend. It doesn't matter if there's 10 cameras, one camera, they're all my best friend because I'm talking to one person. I'm not talking to 30 people here. I'm talking to one person. And if you can do that, you'll be very comfortable in front of a camera. Be on time and in time. On time meaning get your work done, get it done in the time frame that needs to be done. If it's a two and a half minute slot you need to fill, make it a two and a half minute piece. That's all I have. Questions, we're going to do work now. Questions. Going once, going twice, hearing none, we will continue. There we go, here we go.
Microphone. Do you know where to put it? You know how to <coughs> work? Yeah. I have one question. You said, do not ask yes or no question, but how about I ask yes, uh, yes or no question and follow it with a question, like a tricky one? A tricky one. So you're going to, quote unquote, ambush them. Yeah. Um, well, because you want them on record to say, yes, they support this, or no, they don't support this, or yes, I knew, or no, I didn't. Especially in politics. Especially in politics. Uh, if they're a savvy politician, a yes or no usually isn't said, but you're welcome to try. Um, and But what good is it? If, you, if they don't answer the follow-up, yes, I knew that occurred. And then your follow-up is? Because I will be preparing before. You will so be. I'll, so I'll put the two options, if they said yes, on if they said no, what, what, other, what the question will be followed for? Well, that's what a answer? good technique uh, if, you, if that's what you're trying to do. If you're trying to catch them out, uh, that's not much of a win-win. But uh, if you're trying, let me take a poll. Is media biased? Is media biased? I'm not saying one way or the other. Okay, you're not going to say anything. Let me tell you what my opinion. My opinion is we have to be. We have a particular audience that we are trying to hit. They want things presented to them at a particular way. So we do it a particular way. Do we force feed anything? I don't know. I used to be a CNN video journalist, all right? So my, my role was to go out and do science and medical reports, not too complex. Somebody creates something awesome, I go out and say, wow, that's awesome. How does it work? And they tell it to me. So it's not too controversial. But I was also at CNN when Russia shot down a Korean airliner. And almost 300 people died instantly. And we knew it at the time that it happened, except no other news agency had it. So our advertising rates went up and up and up and up because we had all the viewers all day long because the 6 o'clock news was when everybody else was going to see it. So we made money hand over fist from the death of these people. That's when I said journalism is not for me because I don't want to make money off the death of people. So I did it a different way. But if you want to catch the body out, you're welcome to do that. But you're going into this wanting to know something. You're not just saying, tell me what you know. You only ask a question that you already know the answer to. If you don't know that yes or no, you're opening yourself up to who knows what. So that's why you, all the research is very important. And your question is going to be a little bit different depending on your audience. It really is. So is media bias? We have a job to do. Other questions? Yes, no? Everyone has a story. Everyone in here has a story. And what we're going to do the rest of your time here is we're going to develop our interviewing skills by working with your fellow cohorts, understanding what their story might be, and we're going to find out about that now. Now, the way I do this is I always ask a question to my students, usually. What is it that you can do that nobody else can do in this room? And people are going, mm, I can't do anything. Well, yes, you can. You can write for a newspaper. You can come up with compelling questions. People can do things that nobody else can do. I have people that are double-jointed. I have people that play the saxophone. I have people who speak fluent Russian. I have all kinds of people that can do all kinds of things. We all can do something that somebody else can't do to a particular point, and we need to find these things out. What is a compelling story that we can get from somebody? And that's what we need to do from each other. We need to find out what your story is. So if you're going to ask, work with somebody here, find out what their story is, have them find out what your story is. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our venues here at DMC. We have our main set, our secondary set, our chroma key set, which some of you have been having fun with. All right. Or you could work out in the corridors or anywhere on campus to work on the techniques of framing. If you're going to use your, your phones, get close. The audio has to be close. We're, we're accustomed to selfies. That camera is right there all day long. Click, I'm happy. All right. So that's how close you need to be for good audio as well. So get close to people. 
Don't handhold unless you have to. Ask the question that has an open-ended answer, unless, of course, you want to say, were you speeding on the way here today? Maybe. All right. So the other question to that is, what was your traffic fines last month? You know, maybe that answers the question. But so we're going to work on that. We're going to sit down. We're going to do interviews, mic each other up, record you. You can walk away with some, some work. I had a question earlier about your video resume. What should you open your video resume with? Well, my suggestion is, reporting live from HCT, the Biomens campus, I'm take away some footage today that you can use in your resume. This is professional equipment. Make yourself look professionals by using it. OK? Questions, comments, concerns? Food in the hallway? Find somebody to ask some questions to. Find their story, and we'll sit down, come back, pitch it to me, and say, hey, this person's great. We're going to get this story about such and such. Let's sit down. Let's do it. We'll get the cameras on you, and we'll do it. You ready? OK. Let's go. Thank you, by the way. Hmm? Yes. 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 Yes